and welcome to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name's Angela, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Rainbow Ange, and you can find an Instagram account and a Facebook page for my little business. Um, I run a small yarn shop called Yarn and Yarns, um, and we're based just outside of Cardiff in South Wales in the UK. If you are coming back to join me again, thanks very much, and if this is your first time here, very big welcome to you all. You'll have to forgive me if I am somewhat um, airheaded. I don't know if that's really the word I want to use, but it's the one I'm going with. Um, we have been back in the UK for a few days now, but I am still suffering the effects of a bit of jet lag. So my sleep pattern's all over the place, and obviously I'm back to work now, so um, the days are pretty tiring at the minute. <laughs> I've been up since five o'clock this morning, which isn't too bad. Uh, the other day I was up from 2 a.m. Um, and then I was awake at 4 a.m. So I'm slowly <laughs> sleeping more and more. Um, but yeah, feel generally a bit more tired and not quite as with it as usual, <laughs> for which I apologize for. Um, so yeah, this video is going to be um, all about my travel knitting so really uh, a part two to the last video so if you watched the last video that um, I posted I recorded that while we were on an amazing trip to New Zealand and uh, I told you a little bit about some of the projects that I was working on and some of the purchases that I've made so this is just a wrap up really um, I have some finished objects to show you a couple of works in progress and at the very end I have plenty more acquisitions to show you. So I don't usually go acquisition heavy, but um, as all of these purchases were made in the exotic New Zealand, um, and not, I, t I tried to buy uh, sort of, for the most part, New Zealand yarns. So I thought that um, it might be interesting to show you those. Uh, but if you aren't interested, then I'm gonna save those to the very end so that you can just skip that bit if uh, that's not what you're, interested in. So without further waffle, I'll start with my finished objects. So um, as we went around New Zealand, I was working on a pair of socks. Um, I love knitting socks and socks are a super portable project. So they're great for travel knitting and um, for on the go. Um, so I took these with me. I'd just started them before we left the UK, um, but if here they are in their finished form. I've left my blockers downstairs and I've got to go to work in about 45 minutes. So I'm not gonna pop down and waste time getting those. Um, there's a picture on my Instagram feed if you want to see them all nicely displayed. Um, but here they are. So sock number one and sock number two. And these are knit from Stylecraft um, yarns and it's a new yarn line that they've bought out, Boho. Um, lots of pretty fun colours and I picked this one which I think is the Neva or Neva colourway, um, N-E-V-A, uh, I'll have to double check that and if I'm wrong I'll put something either on the screen or down below. Um, but it's knit up, really fun, lots of colours, so obviously yellows, blues, reds with the fun black and white stripes. Um, I think there's about six colours in the range, um, some of them are slightly less colourful in that they're mostly blues or mostly purple, mostly pink, um, but I went for bright jazzy pair. Um, I knit these on my standard 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, I happened to, happened to have a pair of Zings uh, free, so they were the default knit for these. Zings are not my favorite. Um, I enjoy knitting on them just fine, um, but I find that sometimes I like to magic loop and sometimes the join catches slightly um, So I do prefer other brands, but um, it doesn't annoy me enough to not use them um, So yeah, these are done and I think I will put them I've got a little display area on one of the walls in the shop and um, As this is new yarn to the shop. I think I'll put them up on the wall um, As a display item for a little while before I wear them So these might not get worn until next winter um, But yeah, they were um, a lovely knit for um, Traveling around and if you do follow my Instagram feed Then you'll see lots of pictures of me in various locations in New Zealand mostly knitting on these <laughs> 
Okay, so um, finished object number two. Um, again, I showed these in their partially completed state in the last video. Um, so I've knit a pair of these wrist warmers. So here are the finished warmers and I'll just pop one on just to give you an idea. So they're nice sort of cuff warmers. You can obviously wear them up over your hand or down around your wrist. And they're a pattern called the Arrow Wrist Warmers, I think, um, from the Knitting in the North book. Um, super unprepared. And I haven't got the book to hand and I can't remember the author, sorry. So again, I'll try and put that on the screen. And I knit this from another yarn that's um, new to the shop and it is from Bar Am You and it is their Pip Colourwork yarn. So it's actually a new yarn from Bar Am You and I purchased some of this when I went to the Stitches trade show just before we left for New Zealand and the stock arrived just as I was on the day that we left for New Zealand, I popped into the shop and um, the parcel had just arrived. So I grabbed a couple of balls and decided to take these as a fun. Again, quite a nice travel knit project. Really small, two balls of yarn and they're 25 gram balls. Um, and the two colours, the uh, sort of mustardy colour is called brass band and the grey is called crucible. Um, I think I said in my last video I could have picked something that maybe there's a, a white which is called white rose uh, might have pro provided a better um, a higher contrast between the two colours but I think they've turned out pretty well and you can see the design quite nicely so yeah again I think I'll probably put those on the display wall in the shop just to show off that nice yarn for a little while um, <laughs> when hopefully we're heading into warmer weather. Um, I'm chuckling as I say that because when we came back from New Zealand we landed last Friday and over the weekend here we had snow. <laughs> so we went from 20 to 25 um, degrees temperatures, blue skies, sunshine for the most part, to snow and I think it was you know in the minuses to zero so that was a bit of a shock to the system but hopefully <laughs> Since then, the snow melted pretty quickly and we've had um, a couple of nice blue sky sunshine days, although it's still bitterly cold. Hopefully we're heading towards warmer weather. So um, again, I probably won't need these for a little while. So again, they will be up in the shop um, just to show what you can do with that beautiful yarn, which again is Pip Colour Work from Bar Am You. And I have one more finished object and I could have shown this in my last video, but I completely forgot. And I may not have even had it with me because when I recorded we were in the South Island and I may have left this in the North Island but I can't remember and it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, but I made a necklace. Um, we went to New Zealand for a family wedding. James's sister got married. Um, it was a beautiful wedding in a beautiful place um, and I think everyone had an amazing couple of days. So um, obviously we were dressing up a little bit for that day and I had a green dress with lots of um, flowers on that were in different colours and I decided to make a necklace to go with the dress and this is my finished necklace Oops. which I don't think I talked about much um, on a previous episodes but I think I did show a picture on my Instagram um, Basically, I went to the local hardware store and purchased a bunch of plastic washers. And I crocheted around the washers, just double crochet, um, with some cottons. So the orange and the deep purple are uh, Peyton's cotton um, DK, DK weight. And the green is a Rowan cotton glacé. Um, I played around with this a little bit originally, um, I had more green in the necklace, I think I did, uh, I can't remember exactly, I think down here I had one, I either had two oranges, no I didn't have two oranges, I think I might have had a, a green, so I did one colour of each I think of those um, for the sort of under 
layer of the necklace uh, but then I wasn't that happy with the colour balance so I changed it up and put two purples in um, so yeah that was the finished necklace and it was a small wedding there was only 10 of us there but um, a couple of the bride's friends um, made comment and said that they liked the necklace and um, they were reasonably impressed when I said that I'd made it so yeah a fun simple project Um, I was given this piece of suede, um, I think it was from another necklace, it's basically a suede with a lobster claw clasp on it, um, it was all one piece so I chopped it and just stitched that to um, the back of two of the um, pieces to, to complete the necklace so I didn't have, originally I was going to crochet some chains and stuff but uh, in the end actually I had quite a few offers of different um, findings to finish the necklace I've got um, one of my customers is an amazing um, bead and knotwork artist and she uh, offered up some cord um, and in the end I chose this suede cord so yeah I don't know if that, the camera will show but I literally just stitched it to the back of uh, the pieces to join that all together so yeah finished object number three Okay, so that's it for the finished objects. Um, I worked on two other projects while I was in New Zealand and they are still works in progress. Um, so the first one is my Dern jumper, um, which is a lovely jumper knit from Rowan Valley Tweed yarn. So this is the yarn um, in a beautiful autumnal rusty orange colour. And I managed to, this was one of the projects that I cast on as my 12 cast ons of Christmas adventure um, so again if you have watched my videos before um, you will know that over the Christmas period I had some time off work and uh, I decided to cast on 12 new projects just for me um, with no particular rush to get them finished just um, I would work on them as and when just things that I wanted to get on the needles um, so this jumper was one of them and this is a nice um, lightweight four ply yarn um, and I decided that um, it would be a great project to take with me because it takes quite a long time to complete a row and therefore quite a long time to knit an inch and it's very lightweight. Um, but while I was away, I managed to finish the back of the jumper. So I think um, possibly when I showed it to you last time, it was just a little bit of rib and maybe a couple of inches um, into the knitting. And as you can see, I now have a completed back so that was a really good one and again there are pictures on my instagram feed i think there's one of me sat by the pool at the um, wedding venue um knitting on this and there's definitely a couple um of me knitting on this at hobbiton um we were able to visit the fantastic movie set um up in the north island of new zealand and i had to um pose in front of bag end <laughs> with my knitting out which um, made a few others in our um, tourist group laugh. You turn up at the farm where the movie set is um, and there's like uh, obviously a souvenir shop and a cafe and stuff like that and then you get on a bus so they take coach parties, small coach parties, they drive you down into the farm proper and then give you a tour, guided tour around um, the Hobbit Holes and um, the Green Dragon Pub and uh, so yeah this was um, gave some of the other people in our group some amusement as I was posing outside of Bag End with my knitting <laughs> um, but I mean that's the brilliant thing about travel projects as well that you're I mean any project that you knit or crochet you are working in um, amazing memories of what you were up to um, while you're making that thing um, but obviously that becomes even more special when you are travel knitting um, because it comes with all of those um, happy memories of uh, special times and great memories that you were making so yeah I've still got a long way to go on this jumper <laughs> obviously a me size jumper in four ply yarn it's not going to be a quick make 
um, and I, th I think in, I mean, even though it's massive, I think it, this might be a touch too small for me. Um, but maybe that'll be my incentive to lose a stone or so. <laughs> I'm not making any promises. Um, <laughs> But it's, um, I think this will now become my cinema knitting because it's just stocking at stitch. Um, I haven't cast on any other pieces yet, but I think I might do the sleeves next. Um, so usually when I go to the cinema, I take with me some plain socks. I don't have any plain socks on the go at the moment. Um, so I think uh, that the Dern jumper um, will be a perfect cinema knit. Um, the pattern is a Rowan pattern from their Valley Tweed book. So they, it was a book of designs that accompanied the yarn release. And again, I don't have that with me. I just took, took a photocopy of the pattern with me. Um, the last thing you want when you're traveling is to be carrying extra weight, particularly when you're planning on bringing back a whole ton of yarn based souvenirs. You need that space in your luggage. <laughs> but before we get on to the yarn based souvenirs, um, I have one more work in progress to show. And this is a crochet project and I took this project because you do hear stories t from time to time about people having their needles confiscated. I've never had a problem but we were in the air um, for about 27 hours each way and there was no way I was going to cope with that without some sort of creative project to do. So being on the super cautious side I thought well if my knitting needles get taken away from me then um, perhaps uh, the crochet hook would sneak through. Um, so I, at the last minute, tucked this project in with me. And as it turned out, I had no problem with my needles on any of the flights that um, we took. Um, but I started this crochet project on the way back, um, more because I felt quite guilty that I'd taken two balls of yarn that I hadn't started. So I figured at least if I start it on the flight home, then um, I'm justified in taking it, right? <laughs> So uh, yeah, but I'm glad I have started it and this is the project. It is the Flora Bell Shawl, um, which is a pattern from West Yorkshire Spinners. And um, again, it's a lovely design to accompany some new yarn that they have bought out. And I am super excited to say that Yarn and Yarns is now a West Yorkshire Spinners stockist. Um, so I'll probably talk about that more on the next episode. I'll do a bit of uh, more of a shop update, um, but we have got some of their signature four ply yarn and they've just bought out a brand new range which is their florist collection um, based on flowers and things from I think an English summer garden, cottage garden. Um, so instead of doing the one colour shawl I decided to pick out two colours. Um, so I have gone for this uh, variegated pink which is foxglove and a grey um, which is dusty miller. All of the variegated, so there's, I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head how many colours there are in the range, uh, but there's several variegated colours which are um, sort of like the shade, so there's pink, purple, green, blue, um, and then all of those have got this same sort of lovely creamy colour um, in with them as well. And all of these come with a, an accompanying solid colour, um, and also in that range they've bought out this grey which is called Dusty Miller. And I think the grey complements all of the colours in the range. So these are the two that I went with. And I have started my short. I've not got super far. Um, but I shall be taking this into the shop today. We've got our crochet group this morning. Um, so I shall be working on this project in between making cups of tea, <laughs> eating cake and catching up with the ladies of that group. So this is where I have got to so far. I'm just trying to work out... There we go. So I've decided, as you can see, to do the um, plain panels, sorry, struggling for words, in the solid grey, and then I'm making the lace panels in the foxglove. So I'm just starting my second uh, plain panel. As you can see, the grey colour is just coming back. Um, sorry, there's no easy way to show this really. There's ends everywhere, and of course, the lace, until I block it out, is not going to be shown off to its finest but um yeah it's lovely it's um turning out as i imagined and i think this will make first a beautiful sample to show in the shop and then second a lovely um piece to wear matches the cardi that i've got on today so uh yeah 
um, I am pretty sure that this will get a lot of attention over the coming couple of weeks. So that is it for uh, my travel knitting works in progress and finished objects. So I'm just trying to tuck some things away. Now on to the rest of my acquisitions from New Zealand. In the last video, um, I showed a couple of things that I purchased and um, there were a few more purchases after that. <laughs> I'm gonna apologize in advance for any rustling and crinkling, crinkling. I've got stuff in bags and I haven't had time to unpack it. So I'm just gonna grab bags and show things as we go along. Um, so the first thing that um, I purchased after recording my last video, I went to a lovely shop in Wanaka walls of Wanaka um so we when I recorded last we were staying in Lake Tekapo from Tekapo we drove down to Queenstown and um we took a little detour to Wanaka which is another beautiful lake um uh, we didn't stay for long maybe an hour or so we stopped we had a giant ice cream <laughs> and a little wander around and it was a lovely little town by the lakeside and I think if we're ever lucky enough to go back um, we will possibly spend a little bit more time there if we do a similar tour around the South Island. And as we were wandering around, I stumbled across this shop. They sold a lot of ready-made things. Um, we came across a lot of wool, shop, wool shops um, that were ready-made garments. Merino in New Zealand is a massive industry and um, I think they do quite good tourist trade in uh, ready-made items. And I was tempted myself to buy a ready-made um, at a little stop that we made, um, but I didn't really have time to look properly. And I'm glad that in some ways, in some ways I regret it. In some ways it's a good thing because the piece that I was looking at would have cost me about 150 pounds. <laughs> so my bank balance is probably um, the better for not having made that purchase. But anyway, get back to the point. Walls of Wanaka. <clears throat> so as we had been traveling around, I had seen a couple of places that had sold this um, yarn from Touch, Touch Yarns or Touch Fibers. Can't really see because the price label is over the, the price tags over the yarn tag. I think it's Touch Yarns. Yeah, Touch Yarns Limited. Um, and they had a few variegated skeins that I almost purchased. Um, but then when we arrived at Wars of Wanaka, um, I found some solids um, in the same base. And the base is 60% merino wool, 30% possum fur, and 10% silk. I was dying to get some possum yarn. Um, I had heard about this. Um, possums are a pest in New Zealand and um, they have a particular type of fur. I think it's hollow fibre fur, so similar to a polar bear, I believe, um, in that the their fur keeps them cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. Um, but I had heard from a few people um, about possum yarn, and um, James actually had been to New Zealand before and he came back with a pair of possum-based <laughs> gloves. <laughs> Um, which he says are super warm. So, um, of course, I'm always interested to try new fibres. So I purchased two colours, which are these scrummy colours. I'm not sure if they're colourways on the... So this one's called turquoise, and this one is duck egg. And I really like the look of those together. And on my Instagram feed, there is a picture of these yarns by Lake Wanaka, and I think you can see where I took my colour inspiration when I picked these. And um, they're both lovely, lovely turn up, particularly the duck egg. It's got these sort of shots of grey, brownie grey through it. And yeah, it's the subtlety of the colour is not going to show up um, very well on my phone camera. Um, but they're absolutely beautiful. Um, and they're so soft and I think this is going to make one amazing shawl. So I bought two colours that I thought went well together um, with the idea of making a two colour shawl. I have no idea yet what pattern I will um, choose for these. If you've got any suggestions then um, please leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, but yeah, no 
solid plans for those two yet. So that was the first purchase after um, the last time that I left you. Then we went to um, Queenstown and just outside of Queenstown is a really super little village called Arrowtown and it's an old mining settlement and a lot of the buildings there are very old worldy. Um, there's sort of like the high street I guess attracts a lot of tourists because um, of the style of buildings and um, there are some super cute shops there. And one of the shops there is called The Stitching Post. So this is my bag from The Stitching Post. And um, it's a shop, it's multi-purpose. So um, they have fabric, um, embroidery and knitting yarns um, so I may have purchased a couple of things from there <laughs> so um, I will show you the fabric first I thought it'd be fun to make a um, project bag for when I start knitting up my New Zealand yarns um, it'd be nice to have a special bag to keep them in um, so when we were staying in Auckland with James's sister um, Around the bottom of her garden is surrounded by, um, she calls it the bush, uh, it's basically lots of trees and bushes and a sort of wild area and um, apparently there were, were some possums living in there although we didn't ever see the possums. Um, also lots of native birds so there were some beautiful fantails and also a bird called the tui um, which had a very distinctive call um, and they're blackbirds with uh, little white um, sort of, oh, I don't know, almost like a little white tuft um and they were eluding me i really wanted to see one and the first few days we were there oh, i just couldn't catch a glimpse when we went back for our second stint at the end of holiday there was one just like bouncing around in the trees like laughing at me like here i am ha 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 um on full display so um anyway in um stitching post i found a fat quarter which had a sort of stylized tui um on and I liked the colours in there as well so um, that was one of my purchases. Um, I also um, found a sock yarn, um, country wide yarns, they seemed to be fairly prevalent in a lot of the yarn stores. I think, I mean people who have maybe more knowledge, I haven't had time to look anything up but I think these are fairly commercial. Um, they seem to be based in Auckland um, so whether the fibre is actually from New Zealand I have no idea um, but they had some sock yarn um, Happy Feet it's called um, it came in 50 gram skeins and they were really cheap um, so I figured they only had one of this colourway left um, and it's blues and browns and yellows and um, as I was going around New Zealand I were, was often wearing my sketches my little trainers and so I made great use of my shorty socks um, and I haven't really worn them as much uh, before that trip but it's made me realise that with the warmer com weather coming up I'll probably be wearing those um, kind of sketcher type shoes if we're out and about anywhere more and more so I figured one 50 gram skein um, would be a nice souvenir and it will make a lovely pair of shorty socks so that is what I have um, in mind for the happy feet yarn um, and then my final purchase from the Stitching Post was um, a yarn from Naturally Amuri. Now, I don't know if Naturally is the company and Amuri is this um, particular yarn. As I say, I have not managed to be able to do any sort of research really since I've come back. It's been straight back into work. Um, but I will find out a little bit more about these um, as I go, I think. And um, this one is 75% merino, 25% possum. So no silk, um, which is a touch yarn. And I bought a double knit um, yarn. So the touch yarns are four ply. And this one is a double knit. And I purchased three skeins 
of this lovely green colour. Um, again, um, it's very, um, the depth of colour is amazing. There's sort of like shots of, of dark charcoal grey through that. And on my Instagram, there is a picture of me holding this up at Arrow Town. Um, we were surrounded by greenery and sunshine. And um, yeah, I think that's possibly what influenced me to purchase that. And that came with a, the reason I bought three is there was a sample knit up in the shop. Um, it's just called a Murray DK cowl. Um, and I really liked the cowl. They had some finished versions for sale. Um, when I asked whether the pattern was for sale, um, the lady said the pattern would come free with yarn purchase. So I bought enough yarn to make that cowl. I wanted to try and um, make as many purchases with plans as possible. Um, obviously, it's really fun buying yarn and um, souvenirs, um, but it's also nice to have a plan. I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed sometimes with the amount of yarn that I've got. Obviously, I have a shop full, but I have got um, totes full here. Um, so when I purchase now, I want to make sure that I've got some sort of plan in mind. Um, I might even do a de-stash later on in the year, but that's not to talk about now. Right, um, so just a couple more purchases and then we're done. Um, the next one is not yarn, <laughs> but I couldn't resist showing you. So we stopped, I can't remember the place, I think it was called Hanley or something like that, um, when we went to um, Hobbiton. It was quite a long drive from Auckland. I think it was about two and a half hours each way. Um, so we stopped for a coffee break and I almost purchased that ready-made um, poncho that I was talking about earlier on. Um, but in the same shop slash cafe, um, they had these darling um, handmade sheep. Um, this one has still got his label on and probably will take the label off eventually. I think it probably pops. Actually, it might pop over his neck. If I can do that quickly, then I will. So here is my little sheepy. <laughs> um, it's a bit difficult to show him. He's like blowing out against the all white background. Um, but he's just like a really, really fun thing. Um, so there is a bit of yarn in there and obviously some unspun fibre. Um, and he's got his little felt legs <laughs> and his cute felt face and I couldn't resist it he had to come home with me um, and um, he comes with this fun little label and it shows you um, who made him so Tino Tenno made this or Tenor not sure if that's an O or a A at the end um, and it tells you a little bit about him so, and the fact that there are 40 million sheep in New Zealand, 10 times more sheep than people. <laughs> and the product's made from genuine wool from a real sheep. Well, obviously, if it's genuine wool. <laughs> and it's made by hand. Um, and he is called the White Raggedy Wool Sheep. And he is certainly that. Now, um, how I'm going to keep him safe from Newt, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to tuck him away and then I'll find a nice place to display him. And speaking of the devil, she has just arrived. Um, I'm sure she'll scrabble as soon as I pick her up. Here she is. Say hello, Nudie. She's been super cute since we got back. Um, she's been sitting right up next to me. She's not a lap cat. Um, she's <coughs> super affectionate in her own terms, but she doesn't like being picked up and she won't sit on anyone's lap. Um, but since we got back to um, the country, I think she's missed us and she's been spending a lot of time snuggling with us, which is really nice. Okay, um, back to Yarn Hall. <laughs> so, in Queenstown, we um, also came across a lovely little um, craft market. We were waiting to take a lovely steamboat trip across the lake. Um, that is where um, Queenstown is. Um, sorry, I'm getting distracted by, distracted by the cat. Uh, <clears throat> and there was a handmade market going on. Uh, oh, I should have bought, I bought a handmade mug, which I've left downstairs, and um, perhaps I'll try and remember to show that another time. Um, but I also came across a lovely lady um, 
Sheepish Designs, her name is, uh, Isabel Walker, and she was selling her handspun yarns. Um, so of course I had to bring home some skeins of that. Um, I had a lovely chat with her. Um, you can find her on Facebook as Sheepish Designs. And um, yeah, Sheepish Designs NZ, um, she is on Facebook. And I decided to, she had also had some hand spun um, possum blend yarn, but as I'd already purchased a couple of possum blends, I decided to go for a 100% wool. Um, and I picked up two skeins of her beautiful, beautiful hand spun yarn. So there's this one, oranges, yellows, and pinks. And I think um, anyone who knows me knows that I'm always gonna go for anything with a bit of orange in. So that's absolutely beautiful. And then the second one is um, gray and red. And actually I'm wondering if this is spun from a similar fiber to um, one of the Ashford fibers that I was gifted by my friend Tracy. It's very similar in color. Um, again, I'm not entirely sure um, what I'm gonna make with this. I think Isabel has a free pattern on her Facebook page, um, but these will be admired for a little while uh, before they become anything. I just really wanted to support a local small producer um, and as I say, we're now friends on Facebook and so it's fun to make uh, connections with other fibre people all over the world. I'm sure we'll keep in touch. Um, she also gifted me this really cute little jumper pin, which uh, probably doesn't go with, I've got my orange, lovely reishi um, yarn. This is from Miss Babs. Yowza in the Reishi colourway, gifted to me by my lovely friend Lisa. Um, and this is the Lakeshore shawl pattern. Um, so it probably doesn't go with that, uh, but I will wear this soon. I wore it all around uh, Queenstown when she gifted it to me. And again, it's made from her hand spun fibre. And she said it's a mini version of the baby surprise jacket. Um, so yeah, that was that from Queenstown. Um, I also made one other purchase. I told you about the mug, which I don't have with me. Um, I also picked up a hand-turned wooden thimble, which I absolutely love. I didn't get a card from this guy, but he had lots of wood items. And I mean, I will never use this, but it's just a beautiful thing. And I, I mean, I collect thimbles um, from places that we visit and I have bought a commercial thimble um, from, with, uh, from New Zealand, but I couldn't resist also bringing back this special handmade object. He had a whole box of um, wooden thimbles that I was able to rummage through and find what I wanted. So yeah, that was really fun. Okay, and I had, we I promise we're almost at the end, one more yarn adventure. We When we got back to Auckland um, for the last few days of our trip, um, we were back staying with James's sister who had come back from her honeymoon and James's mum and dad. Um, James's sister had to go back to work, so we only saw them in the evenings, um, but we had the days to ourselves. And on our la very last day, we went into Auckland itself. And um, I went to New Zealand Fabric and Yarn <laughs> and did a fair bit of damage there. <laughs> not in terms of quantity, but in terms of the things that I picked that were not necessarily the cheapest things. <laughs> so the first things that I purchased were some Outlaw Yarn Vanitas DK and again I was a bit naughty because I really have no idea what I'm going to make with these yarns but the colours spoke to me and the fact that this particular one is 90% alpaca 10% merino and my justification if I needed one was that I hadn't bought any alpaca <laughs> so I bought wool, wool possum um, but no alpaca. <laughs> so that was the only excuse that I needed. And of course we um, had alpacas on the estate that we stayed at for the wedding. So um, it seemed only fitting that I should come back with some alpaca yarn. And these are the two colours that I picked. This lovely, lovely mustard. This is called Brass. And this one is called Pewter. We're getting some um, really bright light in from the overhead. Uh, now, so sorry if these colours aren't showing. I don't think they're too bad. I think it's my face that's getting a bit blown out, which who cares about that? You're here for the yarn. <laughs> so yeah, and I love the labels on these. Look at these with the skull and the candles. 
very gothic and creepy <laughs> so yeah if you have any ideas i have got two um 100 gram skeins approximately 200 meters in each so if you have any ideas what i can do with um 400 meters of double knit yarn two color project then please let me know um the second thing that i purchased from there is a little kit now there's also a little story behind this so it comes in this little box and when we went to Hobbiton, which was the day before we went into Auckland, I saw one of these kits in the shop at Hobbiton. And I was tempted, it's a little, it's a um, Lord of the Rings inspired yarn. So it's fibre from a flock that were used to um, source yarn for productions like Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and also um, Apparently it's been seen in other Disney productions, The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe and um, Avatar. So they made the cloaks and stuff like that in Lord of the Rings from fibre from this farm. So they came up with also uh, this scarf. I'm just trying to quickly read whether the... Oh, I'm not quite sure. I haven't really got time to read through it all now, but... Um, Stansborough, New Zealand. Licensed weavers for The Hobbit. So that's the card that comes in the kit. And this yarn is called Mithril uh, by Stansborough. It's double knit, pure New Zealand wool. And you buy the kit and it comes with this scarf pattern. Um, which I asked James if he would wear this scarf if I knit it and he said yes so um, I have decided that despite the fact that I love these colours I will knit this for James if he doesn't wear it of course I'll steal it back but there's three skeins of yarn in this kit so there is this gorgeous bluey grey the rusty orange and then an out and out grey don't know if these have got colourways ah they do so this is Kokaku this is Raupo I have no idea if I'm pronouncing these correctly and this one is Takahe Takahe so <clears throat> I saw this kit at the Hobbiton gift shop and I can't remember exactly how much it was I remember showing it to James and we both balked at the price it was over a hundred dollars for three balls of yarn um, and there's 1.8 ish New Zealand dollars to the pound so yeah we, we, we were talking about 50 plus pounds for a scarf for three balls of DK yarn which just seemed slightly pricey to me so we left it behind but then when we went to New Zealand fabrics and yarns they had the same kit for less than $50, $45 or something, maybe $40, I can't remember exactly. Go figure. So yeah, that's how they catch us tourists out in enthusiasm, isn't it, when uh, we go to these places. But yeah, I was super happy to find that kit for less than half the price that it was being charged at Hobbiton. So that had to come home with me. And then finally, <clears throat> this is my final purchase, I promise. And then I really have to go. I should have left the house 10 minutes ago. <laughs> um, and I have bought a pattern to go with this. Um, so I bought two skeins of doe spin, um, hand-dyed yarn, um, New Zealand Merino sock yarn, limited edition hand-dyed, these are. It says, I'm just reading the label. 80% Merino, 20% nylon and I bought two colours so this one is the colours aren't showing as well now as they were earlier girl that's pretty good and this one is viola again I thought they were quite pretty together and um, they also had a bunch of um, truly myrtle designs um, in the shop because um, Libby Johnson I believe lives in Auckland and this yarn shop was in Auckland um, so I decided to purchase obviously you can download Libby's um, patterns from Ravelry she is a well-known designer the 
The reason I'm pausing is because I have realised that they've given me the wrong pattern. Nothing I can do about that now. I'm not going to fly back to Auckland. I wanted the Zeda pattern and they've given me the Zelda. <laughs> Zeda, Zelda, I can see where that um, distinction has come. Anyway, this is the pattern I ended up with. <laughs> not the one I wanted. And I probably won't use this pattern. I like. I really like that pattern. Maybe that one could be for my touch yarns. I have to think about that. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's left me a bit speechless because that's not the pattern I was expecting to show you. Uh, but they had a bunch of Libby's patterns printed that you could buy the printed copies of. Um, but I will download the one that I wanted off Ravelry now. <laughs> So yeah, that was my last uh, New Zealand purchase. As you can tell, I have, I mean, I'm, we're several days back home and I haven't had a chop. This is the first time I'm looking through these yarns. It's been all about the sleep <laughs> since we got back. Uh, so this is the first time I'm unpacking my souvenirs. I'm not unhappy, you know, this pattern. Look, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's just not, the one I wanted and we'll be knitting with these is a nice lacy shawl um, and it has um, in the actual pattern it's purple and green um, so I picked the purple but uh, I decided to go with the blue so yeah that is the last of my New Zealand purchases thank goodness I think it's probably taken me twice as long to get through the purchases as it did the actual knitting at the start so <laughs> If you have stuck with me uh, to the bitter end, thank you so very much and um, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Uh, if you have, then give me a thumbs up. Um, maybe subscribe if you haven't. Um, tell your friends. It'd be nice to have a few more viewers. Um, and I'm sure I shall see you again soon. I think the next episode will be uh, a little bit of a shop update um, and my knitting plans from here on in. Um, but yeah, I will definitely talk to you more about that next time. Um, so bye for now. Hope you are able to have an amazing day, whatever you are up to. And until next time, great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now.